So uh, what I wanted to talk about, because I didn't get to really talk about the OG and Anobi trade on my pod. I talked about, I reacted to it. Uh, I knew we texted when it happened. I know you were not a fan of it initially. Uh, do you have an updated reaction? <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, I'm now over right. two uh, for this stuff. I wasn't a big fan of the Josh Hart trade last season. Uh, but that's that. Wow. Worked. I didn't know that. You I wasn't. Were, I really wasn't. I just wasn't that high on Josh Hart as a player. Um, mm, I bet that changed. And, and there's Knicks fans that still aren't. Um, but I've come around to Josh Hart. I think he what he provides is something we really need. But OG Ananobi, um, what he's done for this offense uh, has exceeded my expectations. He is he brings a lot of the same stuff RJ Barrett does, uh, but he does it a lot more efficiently. And he's comfortable being able to just camp out in the corner and be a shooter. And the big difference is the defense. We can we finally have a guy. Uh, Grimes was kind of our guy for that last season, uh, but since he's now on the bench and he's really just a guard, we have now a wing defender that we could throw at the opposing team's best player. You know, some of the bigger forwards, star players of the league. We have a guy for that now. And that's something we haven't had the past few seasons and something that was sorely needed. So that has been, has worked wonders. Um, And then offensively, he's spaced the floor out more. Brunson and Randall have been able to just cook, you know, whoever it may be and just be, and just play freely and not be so uh, tight and, you know, crowded, which what was happening with RJ Barrett because he wasn't a reliable shooter. He's been shooting well in Toronto, go figure, but he wasn't as big as a reliable shooter and he needed the ball also to really produce. OG Nobi doesn't need that. OG Nobi doesn't have to have 15 to 20 points a night to have an, an impact on the game. And actually, I have some of the lineups right here. Our two top lineups of the season has been with OG Nobi, and he's been here, what, Three weeks. So top lineup is OG Anobi, Jalen Brunson, Harnstein, who's done really well in the absence of Mitchell Robinson, Josh Hart, and Julius Randle. That is our best lineup of the season. They played 41 minutes together. Uh, their net is a plus 59 and a half. And then the second best lineup also has OG Anobi, and it's with Quentin Grimes, Jalen Brunson, Hartenstein, and Hart. So our two best lineups of the season has Josh Hart, and OG Ananobi are two trade deadline acquisitions. So I give all the credit to Leon Rose. I was stupid. These guys help us win. Uh, and it's it's proven wonders for the team so far as we're, you know, we're on pace, I think, to win about 48, 49 games, which is going to be really good. I, I mean, I, I don't think you were stupid. I mean, I, I think you were anticipating Donovan Mitchell, something like that, and – RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly were the two pieces in, in Donovan Mitchell trade. You're probably thinking, well, I saw somebody say, um, I don't know who it was, but somebody said he was, they were really upset with Leon Rose. Cause like, Oh my God, you, you didn't give up uh, RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly for Donovan Mitchell, but you will for OG and Anobi. Mm-hmm. And the reality is the difference was the picks like Danny Ainge was going to be asking for a ton of first round picks. That's why he the wanted, Knicks said no. He wanted five. He wanted yeah. five. That's <laughs> that's why the Knicks said no. That's not because they didn't want to give up RJ Barrett or Emmanuel quickly. It's because they didn't mm-hmm. want to give up. They didn't believe Mitchell was worth five first round picks plus those guys. And they were right. And they were smart not to do that, especially if they beat them. So, yeah. And, you know, the backcourt, the small, the size has been talked about a million times. Knicks fans still think they're getting Donovan Mitchell. We talked about it on your pod. I think it's almost impossible that they get Donovan Mitchell because they have nothing to trade that makes sense for both sides to make that happen. And I think the Knicks uh, see bigger uh, players. I think Donovan Mitchell is not their number one. You know, you hear Stephen A talk about Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell's like, that's not on their radar, in my opinion. And to me, it's clear if you're just judging by their actions, they traded for OG Ananobi because they believe Ananobi's a better fit for what they got going right now and for whatever they could bring in in the future. OG Ananobi's a guy that can start everywhere. He could be yeah. a starter on a championship team, pretty much, not pretty much, definitely, 
everywhere because he defends, he spaces the floor, he does his job. And I think what Knicks fans were not anticipating was that this trade was less a stat thing because, you know, if you look at OG Ananobi's stats, you're like, oh, what's so crazy about it? Well, we obviously know he plays defense. Well, he doesn't just play defense. He's like a top three perimeter defender in the league, so that's really important. Mm -hmm. And number two, especially – for Tom Thibodeau, like, you, you know, he's yeah. going to get the best out of a guy like that. And number two, he could shoot the ball, catch and shoot wise. He can definitely hit a perimeter shot and it opens up the floor. This was the biggest thing was opening up the floor for Randall and Brunson. And Randall and Brunson have played really well since this trade, especially Jalen Brunson. Yeah. And Emmanuel quickly, I know Knicks fans loved him. They like the bench scoring. You know, it's crazy. Well, listen, the bench scoring is important. Don't get me wrong. But Emmanuel quickly has sucked in every playoff series he's played it. Now, granted, that hasn't been many. And Randall hasn't been great either. At least Randall has the excuse of being hurt in the second one. But quickly, smaller guard, not a great defender, coming off the bench. Obviously, bench scoring is important. But considering Thibodeau plays Jalen Brunson like 42 minutes a night, you know, exactly. especially in the in the playoffs, it, how valuable is quickly really? And they knew they weren't going to pay that money for him, so might as well put him in an OG and an OB trade. And because of that, they didn't have to give up one first round pick. They have all their firsts, so they can move Mitchell Robinson and a bunch of firsts and whoever they need else in that deal. Maybe Randall, who does? Maybe not even Randall. For someone like a Joel Embiid, which you and I have talked about. And, you know, that's that level of player. They have the ability to make a package like that. And that's what's worth it, in my opinion. But you've watched more Knicks games than I do. What do you sense is, like, the biggest thing that they need? Because I think we both can acknowledge that this team may be a top-four team in the East at their best. Maybe mm -hmm. a second-round team. Maybe... Even if they get the right opponent, they can make the conference finals. But what gets them to having the best possible chance at winning with the current group that they have? I think so. The Ananobi trade in trading Barrett and quickly, you create a vacuum in your bench because basically all of our bench scoring, a lot of it came from quickly. And then we'd also run units where it was a bench lineup with RJ Barrett. And it would allow him to just, you know, be on ball and kind of run the road and run the lineup, you know, run the offense. You remove that. Now we're relying on Deuce McBride, who they just uh, re-signed to an extension. We rely on Quentin Grimes, Precious Achua, who we also got in that trade. You're relying mm -hmm. on, you know, guys that are just not, you know, reliable options to run an offense. Deuce McBride, his three-point shot has improved. He's a great defender. Uh hard nose brings energy, but he's not a great point guard in terms of running the offense. And I know JJ Redick thinks traditional point guards don't exist anymore, but you still need someone that can play make and, you know, run your offense. So that is a problem. And that's what we're going to be looking for as we come to closer to the trade deadline. Some of these guards that are coming available, maybe a Spencer Dinwiddie. I've heard uh, Bruce Brown, people say about that. Uh, DeJounte Murray obviously has come up because people want, another star caliber player. I don't think we go in for DeJounte Murray. It doesn't make sense. I don't think we can provide the best offer, uh, but I'm sure we'll discuss that maybe a little later. But that's the number one thing. Um, we need someone off the bench that can score and provide offense. Because right now, I, I don't know if you saw, we played the Wizards on Thursday night, and it took a 40-point game from Brunson. All the starters almost played 40 minutes. And that's not, you know, sustainable throughout the regular season, especially that was on the second night of a back to back. You know, we want our guys healthy for the playoffs because I think this team has a chance to really make a nice playoff run. Maybe not the finals, but I think just like you said, depending on matchup, I think we can make the conference finals. That's how good this team is, how good they are playing on both ends of the floor. We're one of the best rebounding teams in the league. And that's a really, really important, you know, in tight games securing defensive and offensive rebounds but that's the one thing we need someone off the bench and it's going to have to come at this trade deadline most likely i think this year in a lot of ways is an evaluation year still for the knicks to see how they compare really any every year kind of is an evaluation year when you think about it but 
like considering how they made the second round last year, they proved that they were a better team than Cleveland. This year, they got off to a shaky start. They haven't been able to beat good teams, but they beat the teams that they're supposed to beat, which is what you need to do. Good teams do that, right? Yeah. However, they've competed well against the Bucs. They've competed well against the Celtics and the Sixers. They blew them out not too long ago, right? Yeah. That was, uh, I think, OG's maybe second game, maybe second or third game, something like that. It was really early on, I think. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, like January 5th. So it might Yeah, been it was early. Third game, yeah. But I remember that was the game where, like, I think even haters of the trade started to be open their eyes, even though they beat Minnesota, which was a very right. impressive win, yeah. too. So, but Philly, same conference, I think that took a lot of people by surprise that they blew out Philly like that. And I, I've been on the record about Philly. I'm a wait. I'm, I've seen Joel Embiid dominate the regular season year yeah. in, year yeah. out. And then they lose in the second round of the playoffs, mainly because of an injury that he has. I'm not saying it's his fault, but he usually is injured and they need other guys to step up and they usually don't. Maybe that changes this year. I still think Philly isn't talented enough to keep up with some of the bigger teams. So if I'm a Nick fan, I'm thinking like, why can't we beat Philly? Why can't we have a chance versus Milwaukee? Why can't we have a chance versus Boston? Boston doesn't have amazing coaching. You know, like Milwaukee certainly doesn't have amazing coaching. So I look at it that way. I also look at how Milwaukee struggles defensively. That's a huge issue. And I think Brunson can absolutely dominate a Milwaukee Bucks series. Dominate. 100%. So it's all going to come down to Randall. Because we know Brunson's going to show up. We know Ajina Ananobi is going to show up. If Julius Randall does not, does not have a good playoffs, and... I've been on the record. I don't think his game is really fitted for the playoffs and scouting. Now, last year, I think, was unfair to be so hard on him because they did go pretty far and for their for any expectation that we had of them. And they were competitive versus Miami, you know? And, yeah. and uh, you know, he played hurt. So I'm not going to rip him too much, but he, Randall has a real shot. Like, this is a make-or-break year for him. If he does not play well... Or the Knicks this year. I think his future is in major jeopardy with the franchise. But if he does play well, then we're it's a different story. But yeah. I just want to throw out two names to you. One name I'm going to bring up first, mainly because I don't I don't know if he'll be available anymore, is Jordan Clarkson. I thought he was going to be available hmm. through trade. Now I'm not sure because Utah's winning. But yeah. I think the number one fit for the Knicks would be somebody like Malcolm Brogdon. Right. Yes. Backup guard can score. Well, can do everything you need. Um, I don't know if he'll be happy about his playing time under Thibodeau, but he's a smart basketball player. I would imagine he would play. And to me, I don't think it, it would be too hard to get that done. Um, maybe a protected first and a second, you know, cause you guys have all these protected first. Maybe you need a real first. Maybe it's two protected first to get him. But I think getting him would be great. And I don't I think he's someone you could keep with your team for a long time. To me, he's a championship level player. So if you're making another trade for like a one A type guy, having Malcolm Brogdon on the roster doesn't hurt you at all. So to me, he's the premier guy. What do you think about him? I I'm a big fan of Malcolm Brogdon. I'm I'm mad he took the six man of the year award away from Manny quickly. But that is a media issue uh, because all of a sudden starting games is a problem when you're six man of the year, even though that's never been a problem before. But I digress. Um, Malcolm Brogdon, yeah, I actually forgot about him. That's been something I've heard a lot of with Nick fans. I think that's a very likely thing they could get done. I think it would be not difficult of a trade to get done. They are shopping Quentin Grimes. Maybe they send Quentin Grimes in a pick, and that's enough for Portland to bite. Um, and send Malcolm Brogdon out. Brogdon obviously is not part of their future. They got Simons. They got Scoot. They want that to be their starting backcourt of the future. So Brogdon's kind of just there. You know, they got him in the Boston deal. It was surprising, actually, that Boston traded him because he had such a great season, and I thought he was really good off the bench for them. He was unhappy. Well, yeah. Because he was originally in that Porzingis deal. Right, right. And, and he was upset about that. Through. 
Yeah. Yeah. So once you sour that, I guess that makes sense. But yeah, I think that is a trade I would really like for the Knicks to get done. Um, someone that can defend a little bit, great playmaker, can score. I think he had 30 against the Pacers the other night in Pascal Siakam's first game. Um, so he is someone that would really bolster this bench and I think would really bring things together and that would really make us even better. He kills my team, the Brooklyn Nets. Um, considering that Boston didn't, it didn't take a lot for Boston to get him. Why would it take a lot for the Knicks to get him? He's a seamless fit. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think, uh, complete no brainer. I, and I think if we're thinking of Malcolm Brogdon teams, I think he probably fits best there because he could be very useful there. Um, but yeah, as far as the Knicks go, I think they're, they have to be taken seriously. I think Ananobi opens things up and I think Barrett, just to talk about him real quick. Uh, he's obviously playing well in Toronto. Good for him. He probably has more freedom to do certain things. Um, but uh, Knicks fans were very protective of RJ Barrett. I think some were, yeah. right? They 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 yeah. wanted him to be good because, and not just good, good for them. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he came at a very sensitive time for the franchise. You guys missed out on Durant and Irving. They went to Brooklyn. Uh, you didn't get Zion and you didn't get Ja. And so it was a very sensitive time. And you know what? If you would have told Knicks fans in 2019, uh, hey, this guy is not going to be that great. He's going to play for your team for what, five years? Yeah, not this even. Is, this is fifth season now. So, four yeah, so not even, yeah, not even five years. And you guys are going to make the playoffs twice and be better off without him. I think Knicks fans would have been like, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I'll take it, but that's not what I was expecting. But that's what's happened. And I think it's a testament to the front office and what they've done afterwards. Uh, but Barrett just wasn't a great fit with what they did. And it okay. it's clear 100% after OG there. Because OG just spaces the floor. Barrett needs more space to maneuver. And his him clashing with Randall and Brunson just wasn't going to be it for them. It allows Brunson and Randall to be free. If um, the Knicks played at their best last year when Barrett was shooting the ball well, because it opened up the floor for everybody. Yeah. And 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 I think that's uh, I think it's good that he's in Toronto. He's in his home in Canada, so that's good for him. 